Hey there guys, Matthew here from the Who Addicts and welcome to my worst possible series. Oh, I find that so difficult to say with enthusiasm. But like my best possible series that I did last week, it is exactly the same. I'll be going through all the series openers from the modern series, all the episode 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, etc. But unlike my best possible series where I was extremely positive picking my favourite series openers, my favourite series finale, I'm doing the opposite today because, uh, well, the worst possible series is exactly what it says on the tin I am constructing um, as opposed to what was my perfect marathon last week. This week I'm picking my nightmare. The marathon that would probably end my life. My worst possible... That was a bit overdramatic, wasn't it? Jesus. My worst possible series from the modern series of Doctor Who. And of course, it's going to be interesting to see if any episodes from series 10 will make it into the worst possible series. So before we start, before we go any further, this was my worst possible series in 2016. So my least favourite series opener is New Earth, followed by Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. Jesus Christ, this is bad already. Episode 3 was Victory of the Daleks. Episode 4 was The Power of Three. Episode 5 was The Girl Who Died. Episode 6 was The Bells of St. John. Episode 7 was The Idiot's Lantern. My least favourite episode 8 was Let's Kill Hitler. My least favourite episode 9 was Sleep No More. My least favourite episode 10 was In the Forest of the Night. Least favourite episode 7 was Fear Her. The worst episode in the history of life, sorry, uh, the worst episode 12, Hellbent. My least favourite series finale was The Wedding of River Song. And my least favourite Christmas special was The Doctor, The Widow and The Wardrobe. Now of course last week um, I already delved quite deep into all the episodes from series 10. And of course we've already reviewed them on the channel too. So I'm not going to be going as in depth today. So like I said, before you go any further, if you haven't already, it is imperative that you go back and watch the best possible series first. If you want to know our thoughts on all the episodes from series 10 in even more detail, as much detail as you can possibly get, then we've got every single review on a playlist on the channel. But without any further ado, let's kick off with episode 1. Now of course my current least favourite series opener is New Earth, and that is going up against the pilot. And as you all know, I thought the pilot was a fantastic series opener. I really loved it, and it's nowhere near my least favourite series opener. Has New Earth been replaced by another series opener that I've took a disliking to since my last Worst Possible series? And my answer is no. New Earth, to me, it's one of the most anticlimactic and uneventful series openers that we've ever had. And I think series openers, they've got to be strong. You know, they've got to kickstart the series, they've got to get you in the mood, ready to go for the, for the next 12 or so episodes. Um, so yeah, that's exactly what a series opener should be, and that's what New Earth wasn't. And um, for the Tenth Doctor's first full episode, if you class him not being asleep, it was not the best. Um, and although it's far from, you know, an atrocity, it's far from awful, um, it is by far, I'd say, along with Asylum of the Daleks, which is just behind my least favourite, Episode 1. Episode 2 now, and I've currently got dinosaurs on a spaceship, and that's going up against Smile. Um, and as I said last week, Smile, it's not one of the best episodes of, um, of Series 10, but due to my low expectations, I found myself enjoying it a lot more than I thought. The more I think about Smile, the more I sort of like it. Um, there's, a little, there's, a, there's a bit of charm about Smile, I'm not sure what it is. It's just a very likeable episode. And it's one that I can kind of sit back and enjoy and just take lightly. So yeah, I, Smile's alright. I'm, I'm beginning to like it more and more. Dinosaurs on a Spaceship was a mashup of dinosaurs, spaceships... No. Nah. Um, the characters we met were random, not very likeable, not... I wasn't invested in them at all, wasn't really given a reason to like them. Um, I thought that the Eleventh Doctor especially um, was a little bit immature, a little bit annoying in this one. And um, usually, with any poor episode, Matt Smith's Eleventh Doctor could pull through the episode and make it bearable. But this was one of the few where I didn't really even enjoy the Eleventh Doctor. Overall, the episode just felt of a mashup of ideas that they just thought of in the writer's room. Um, because they needed an episode, and someone thought of dinosaurs on a spaceship. We need an episode for a week two. There we go. So yeah, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, without a doubt, is still my least favourite episode two. Episode three, and I've got Victory of the Daleks currently going up against Thin Ice. And um, I really like Thin Ice on first viewing, and um, I still think it's a pretty good episode two. Uh, not the best, I think I do need to give it a rewatch to be honest, but um, it's by far nowhere near my least favourite episode three. Um, there are some others that I think are much worse. And um, Victory of the Daleks is one of them episodes, and I will say it remains to be my least favourite episode three. I will just... I, I'll never get over how badly the Daleks were treating that episode. It's just... I, 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 I want to love the Daleks. I want to love them. And every time they pop up, I, 
You know, we all get excited, no matter how disappointing their previous appearance was, no matter how much they were wasted or made to look stupid in the last episode. When the Daleks appear, we always get hyped for it. We're always excited. This is finally going to be a good Dalek story. And then it always ends in the same way. We always come away disappointed, deflated, because it just wasn't good enough. And, um, yeah, I, 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 I love the Daleks for their history and for what they've done for the show. And I just want the best for them. And that's why I don't like Victory of the Daleks too much. I thought the first half, to be fair to it, was very, very good. I thought the Doctor Dalek dynamic was fascinating. The, the Doctor was more of the villain. I felt more sorry for the Dalek. But um, as the episode went on, especially the second half of the episode... Um, it just got silly. I mean, uh, we all know what happened with the multicoloured smarty Daleks or whatever you call them. They were, they were daft. I mean, design-wise, voice-wise, perfect. Colour scheme, what was going through your head, Mark Gatiss? They were defeated in a very soft way and um, were made to look a little bit stupid, to be honest. So, yeah, Victory of the Daleks is a shame because the first half was fantastic. It was a great historical story, which I love, but, um, yeah. Second half was unforgivable and uh, it will remain to be my least favourite episode three. Episode 4 now, and um, we've currently got the power of 3, and it's going up against Knock Knock. And as I said last week, despite the ending being extremely anticlimactic and a little bit of a letdown with Knock Knock, um, after I'd say 90% of it was, was phenomenal, it will be nowhere near my worst possible series. I really, really enjoyed it overall. And um, the power of 3, I'll be honest with you, I watched it mm, a, little, a couple of months ago, I would say, and um, I, I enjoyed it more than I remembered. You know, I, I think the dynamic of how the Doctor was at home, you know, the, the sort of swapped places with the Ponds instead of you know, the Ponds being in his home, travelling with him. The Doctor was sort of stuck on Earth with them. And I really did enjoy that dynamic with the Doctor having to be bored, you know, struggling with things to do. He, and I just thought it was quite funny and a little bit different. And... It was a rare episode in, in the Moffat era, which was set completely on modern day. It felt a little bit contemporary, which I liked. But, um, yeah, it just sort of lost its way with the whole cube thing. The ending was a simple Sonic saves the day. So, I think with the power of three, I've, I've begun to see its potential. I've begun to see its positives more, but the negatives are still very much there. And as much as I enjoyed it and the last time I watched it, unfortunately, despite it being a little bit higher in my regard, the power of three, again, does remain to be... My least favourite, episode four. Episode five, and uh, I currently have The Girl Who Died, which of course is going up against Oxygen. And um, I feel like a broken record here, but Oxygen wasn't the greatest episode. It didn't blow me away, but it was very, very good. And um, it's, again, nowhere near my, my, my worst possible series. It's, it's another solid episode. It's going up against The Girl Who Died, which, um, yeah. I didn't like it all. I thought it was, was silly. I thought the Doctor was, was written terribly. Um, really, really immature in this. It, it just fell out of character. It didn't feel like a 12th Doctor script at all. The Meyer, I thought, were a, were a very poor villain. Um, <clears throat> and I just, I thought it was a, a real opportunity wasted. You know, we had a good looking villain there with, with the robot men. I can't remember their names. Obviously, we were getting introduced to a Shilda, which was a a very unique character, a very intriguing character at the time, but um, the way she died at the end and then came back to life was very, very predictable. Of course, the next episode was called The Woman Who Lived. So, yeah, overall, The Girl Who Died, it was just, it felt like a waste of time, really, a waste of potential, a waste of time, um, an episode that frustrated me quite a bit. So, um, yeah, The Girl Who Died remains to be my least favourite episode five, and my worst possible series currently remains unchanged until now. Episode 6, and I had The Bells of St. John in uh, my worst possible series. And the reason why was because I didn't remember it fondly. I didn't look back on it well. I remembered it to be quite boring, uh, uneventful, didn't stand out. It was a filler. And I watched it in the retro reviews. And this is, this is why the retro reviews, in my opinion, are such a good idea. And I, we rewatched The Bells of St. John a couple of months ago, and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. The idea of the Wi-Fi, I thought, was, was, was brilliant. It was an original idea. It sort of involved 21st century culture, in a way, into an episode. I thought it was really, really clever. The, and I thought Clara was, was very good in it, too. The 11th Doctor, I thought, was on top form. And when I looked back at my worst possible series from two years ago and saw that the Bells of St. John was there, 
I really, I felt really bad, and I felt stupid for for putting it in there in the first place. And I wish I'd gone back um, in 2016, give it a watch before putting it into my worst possible series, because I really, really enjoyed it. So um, it's not going to be in my worst possible series anymore, and um, it's going up against Extremis, which wasn't the greatest episode, but um, I had some great ideas in there, um, had some great moments. And I think it's fair to say that it did kickstart the three-parter pretty well. So I think Extremis had enough going on for it to not be in my worst possible series. So I have swapped The Bells of St. John out with another episode. And I've gone with The Woman Who Lived. Now I think it says a lot that um, I've got an entire two-parter in my worst possible series. But um, yeah, The Woman Who Lived, I thought, was a very lacklustre conclusion to what was already quite a dull two-parter. The only thing I liked about the woman who lived was that we finally got to delve a little bit deeper into a Shilda or me. We got to delve a little bit deeper into her backstory, seeing about the history of her character, what she'd been through, losing a child, etc. It gave her character more credibility. It finally gave me a reason to care about her, which I thought was good. And it's I think it's what her character needed, but that was all there was. They, they were going up against this very weird looking cat creature that bursted flames out of his mouth. I thought the conclusion was it was very rushed. Um, so yeah, it was an episode, another episode that was a little bit anticlimactic other than other than me's backstory. I had nothing going for it and I look back on that episode and I can't really find a reason to, to go back and watch it. So um, yeah, it was a, it's a two-parter that I think you can see I don't look back on well and The Woman Who Lived is now, in my eyes, the worst episode six. Episode 7 and I currently have the Idiot's Lantern going up against the Pyramid at the End of the World and um, as I said, I thought the Pyramid at the End of the World was the best part of the Monk 3 parter um, so it will not be in the worst possible series either and um, it won't be replaced either. The Idiot's Lantern will remain to be my least favourite Episode 7. Um, I thought The Wire was a really over-the-top theatrical villain that got on my nerves more than spooked me or scared me. The family that we, we met, I can't remember their names, I thought The Sun um, Timmy was it? I thought he was, I thought he was a good character, um, but I thought the rest of the family were not. I mean, I know the dad wasn't meant to be likable, but I wasn't really that bothered about the rest of the family. Um, it all came down to the wire, really. She was sort of the focal point of the episode, and um, yeah, didn't like her at all. I, mean, I, I wasn't invested in the story whatsoever. The only thing I really, really liked was the historical side and how it, you know, it, it weaved in with the, the the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II and. You know, the fact that there'd be loads of people watching. And the motive of what The Wire was trying to do, um, I thought was very good and very clever. How that linked in with historical events. But other than that, it's a, an episode I find like a real filler. And it's one that I don't really enjoy. So it will remain to be my least favourite, Episode 7. And now Episode 8. Ah, we've got Let's Kill Hitler or Lie of the Land. Jesus Christ. They're both awful. And I honestly, when constructing my worst possible series, and I was going through the episodes of series 10, and I thought, well, episode 1 or episode 7, they're all just consistently solid. And I couldn't really think of one really bad thing about any of them. And I got to Lie of the Land, and I thought, Jesus Christ, that's going to be in my worst possible series. I hated the conclusion, and I hated how two episodes build up came to nothing. Um, I hated how the regeneration was trekked. And how it was just shunned away when it was on the, it was in the bloody trailers for the series. I felt as if they'd reeled us in, got us excited, only to then laugh in our faces. And I just thought that the whole Bill's mother thing at the end was just soppy and soft and really, really stupid. And I thought that's nailed on. That's going to be in my worst possible series. And then I realised that it was going up against Let's Kill Hitler, which is undoubtedly one of the worst episodes in the history of Doctor Who. And I thought, you know what, Lie of the Land. You've got off lucky there, because I thought it was a certainty um, to be in the uh, worst possible series, but Let's Kill Hitler's another level of awful. Following A Good Man Goes to War, that incredible climax, Let's Kill Hitler was just terrible. You know, Mel's was, was, was an annoying character. Of course it revolved around Bloody River's song. She was flirty, she was annoying. I didn't really like the test lecture at all. And it was just a very messy, confusing all over the place episode, and I think that was the moment series 6 just fell apart, you know, it was building up rather nicely, I thought Good Man Goes to War was, was, was the pinnacle, and Let's Kill Hitler just, what was already quite a confusing storyline that was hard to get to grips of, you know, you, you just really, after Good Man Goes to War, realised what was going on, you were back into the story, you were ready for part 2 of series 6, 
and then Let's Kill Hitler just basically grabbed it all, mangled it up, threw it in a ball and chucked it in the bin and went, yeah, now figure this one out. By the lands a very, very close second, but unfortunately Let's Kill Hitler was terrible and it will take one hell of a monstrosity to beat it. Episode 9, and uh, once again, Empress of Mars, not the best. Not awful, but boring, I would say. Um, like I said last week, this was when Series 10 was going through its slow, boring stage where we were biding our time from, you know, to the finale. I thought Before Lie the Land was very, very good after this. It, I think Episode 8, 9, 10 um, of, of Series 10 were when it really just went at snail's pace. Yeah, it was a pretty forgettable episode and, and one of the weakest of Series 10. But then I realised it was going up against Sleep No More, which was an absolute pile of rubbish. Um, an awful episode, really, really boring. It was it was horrible to watch, and I just yeah I I dislike Sleep No More so much. It, it was a really, 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 really poor episode, and um, like Let's Kill Hitler, it would take one hell of an episode to be worse. So um, Sleep No More is undoubtedly the worst episode nine, and it's probably going to have that seat for a very very long time. Episode 10, and um, we had the Eaters of Light, which um, after Lie of the Land was probably the worst episode in series 10. Um, for different reasons, Lie of the Land was more disappointing, the Eaters of Light was the definition of boring. And I was looking forward to this one, and I think, as opposed to Smile, where I went into it with low expectations, but then actually quite liked it, I think I went into the Eaters of Light with too much high expectations. We had the return of a classic writer, in Rona Munro. Um, from the outset it looked very dark, very creepy, very intense. Um, the villain looked very, very good, very creepy, very exciting from, from the trailers. But um, it came to absolutely nothing. Um, the villain was hardly in it. Uh, the Roman soldiers I thought were, were, weren't the greatest. I thought the acting was a little bit poor as well. And nothing really happened in the Eaters of Light. And you know, I do think it's probably victim to how much hype I sort of had in my own mind and how much I was looking forward to it. I think that's maybe why I came out of it a little bit more deflated than maybe other people did. But um, it's not worthy of being in my worst possible series because it's going up against In the Forest of the Night. Undoubtedly the worst episode of series 8. Um, it was just terrible. It was, it was awful. Um, child acting is the worst I've ever seen. There wasn't really a story to it because at the end of the day, take the Doctor out of In the Forest of the Night, take Clara, take Danny, take the children, nothing happens, they don't make a difference. Even if they were there or not, the trees would appear, protect the earth from a solar flare, the solar flare would come, destroy the trees, the earth would be fine, Bob's your uncle. It's literally got no substance. No substance, no narrative, no plot. It is the definition of pointless. And on top of that, the substance that they did try and give it with the doctor and the children and everything was just awful. You know, I, I didn't like the Clara Danny relationship to begin with, so that didn't help. The child acting was just damn awful and cringy. It is one of the one of them stories that you could take out of, of Doctor Mythology and it would make no difference. It didn't lay a single mark. It didn't stamp its authority on any part of series eight. It meant nothing. It was meaningless. It was terrible. Sorry, Frank Control Boys, but yeah, In the Forest of the Night is the worst episode of Series 8, one of the worst of them on series, and without a doubt, the worst Episode 10. Episode 11, and um, quite a difficult one, this one, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's going up against World Enough and Time, which, um, you know, I'm not even going to mention it in, in the worst possible series. What a fantastic episode that was. So, yeah, Fear Her is going to remain as my least favourite Episode 11. And I feel a little bit bad, because I actually kind of like Fear Her. Um, it is a little bit weak, a little bit of a filler, doesn't really stand out too much, but um, the ideas in there are rather nice. Um, it feels weird watching it back that it was set during the 2012 Olympics, because back then that was like six years into the future, and now that's almost six years into the past, which makes me feel really, really, really old. But other than that, I thought the idea with, with, the, with the kid whose drawings come to life was kind of nice. Feels a little bit more like it should have been a Sarah Jane Adventures sort of story, but um, it was okay for what it was, but I think it just comes up against so many great episodes, and um, if I was to have all the episode 11s lined up, I think I would probably choose to watch Fear Her last. So that's why, unfortunately, 
it is going to remain in my worst possible series and is my least favourite, episode 11. Episode 12! The Doctor Falls. Nowhere near. It's going up against Hell Bent. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to tell you to do something. If you want to know my thoughts on Hellbent, go to my worst possible series in 2016 and go to approximately 24 minutes and 25 seconds because you will then find out my honest opinions on Hellbent. I may have ranted for about five minutes and used a few words that I maybe wouldn't use now, but um, yeah, I'm not even going to go there. If you don't know my thoughts on Hellbent, it's probably a good thing. It's probably going to save me quite a few expletives in this video. But um, yeah, go and check out our Hellbent review. Go check out my worst possible series from 2016. Simply put, Hellbent is the biggest pile of <laughs> in Doctor Who history. Insulting, offensive, awful, terrible, rubbish, the worst episode in the modern series by some distance, absolutely awful. Episode 13! And, uh, yeah, I've got the Wedding of River Song, which, <laughs> dear me, this is, this is the point, if I was to marathon these episodes, I mean, I don't even think I'd make it to, to episode 9 or 10, but if I was to get to this part, it would probably kill me off. Hellbent, followed by the Wedding of River Song. Good God almighty. The Wedding of River Song, I thought, was the worst episode in the modern series, and I thought that could not be topped until Hellbent came along, and uh, God, what a job that did. But yeah, The Wedding of River Song is a close second. Um, really, really don't like that episode. I thought it was a mess. Um, tried to have two narratives going on at the same time. It was just confusing. It was horrible to watch, painful to watch, and the climax was, was just terrible, with the Doctor having to somehow get married to River for some bloody reason. Um, and then the whole Tesselect thing. It was like, yeah, you know, all this big old mystery about the Doctor apparently being dead. Yeah, he was, he was just a Tesselect all along. Fool you, viewers. What a rubbish ending to what could have been a great series. So yeah, The Wedding of River Song was almost as insulting. Almost as annoying and horrible as Hellbent. Not quite, but uh, it's it's up there. And uh, yeah, with there's not having an episode 13 for the foreseeable future, it will probably forever be my least favourite episode 13. Christmas special! And yeah, Doctor Who in the Wardrobe. Once again, there's no competition. It is a... Uh, a really cheesy, really cringy, soppy, silly Christmas special. You know, I mean, the Moffat Christmas specials I don't like for being too much fantasy, too much lovey, too much snowy, Christmassy, cringy stuff that is very much for kids. Although there will be sections of people in, in the Doctor demographic, mostly the, the younger audience who probably love this sort of an episode. For me personally, I really didn't like it. Um, I thought the story was weak, the characters were weak, it, like I say, very cringy, the child acting again wasn't great, and um, yeah, The Doctor Who Wardrobe is without doubt the worst Christmas special we've ever had, um, as opposed to Twice Upon a Time, which um, in the last week, I listened to the Big Blue Box podcast's review of it, and um, it opened my eyes to a few things, um, so maybe Twice Upon a Time might drop slightly in my Christmas special ranking, but um, it's still solid enough, and it's still miles better than most of the other Christmas specials that Moffat spurned out apart from The Snowman, which I thought was actually alright. So yeah, The Doctor of the Run Wardrobe does remain to be my least favourite Christmas special, and um, yeah, it probably always will. So that's it, my worst possible series is finished, and um, there were hardly any changes, and I think that goes to show how strongly I feel about a lot of the episodes in this series. So this is how the worst possible series stands at the end for 2018. So I've got New Earth, followed by Dinosaurs in a Spaceship, Victory of the Daleks, The Power of Three, The Girl Who Died, The Woman Who Lived, followed by The Idiot's Lantern, Let's Kill Hitler, Sleep No More, In the Forest of the Night, Fear Her, Hell Bent, The Wedding of River Song, and The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe. Now the main thing for me, which I've noticed, is that there is not a single Series 10 episode in there, and I think that goes to show how much of a consistent series Series 10 was, in my opinion. Um, like I said, I think there were not too many episodes that blew me away, uh, apart from the finale. I wouldn't say there was any that really excelled from good to great. But um, I would say there weren't too many that really dropped from a little bit poor to really, really awful. The only two that stand out really was Live the Land and Idiots of Light. And um, 
one was just a little bit infuriating and frustrating, the other one was just a little bit boring. And I think them two episodes have been let off slightly. They probably would have been in my worst possible series, but they were coming up against Let's Kill Hitler and In the Forest of the Night. So, um, yeah, they've been let off there. But other than that, Series 10 on the whole was a really strong series, and I think it goes to show with um, the addition of the Doctor Falls in my best possible series, and um, no additions in my worst possible series. It goes to show that it was solid from start to finish. So that's my worst possible series, guys. Do like this video if you've enjoyed it, and subscribe to the Who Alex for more videos to come, and comment in the section below your worst possible series, and yes, yeah, stay updated on everything the Who Addicts to uh, yeah, see what videos are coming in the next week. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what you guys think because the last Worst Possible series I did got a ton of views, a ton of likes, and over a hundred dislikes. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. But until then guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.